All right, the AW show opened up with Orange Cassidy coming down to the ring. And essentially, he said thank you. He said he was going to be here every week, even though they told him to take the night off. And he is Orange Cassidy. He does not have a catchphrase. And so he starts to leave, and out comes Moxley. And he walks up the ramp, and Orange just looks back and looks like they're building to another Orange Cassidy John Moxley match at some point down the road. Probably not well, imminently. They, they, they got. They got a lot of big shows. They got to start doing those ma- big matches. This holding off for these matches is, you know, whatever. Um, but the other thing too. So, so here's the thing that's like, let's take this tournament for the for the world title shot, okay? And as usual, when they do these tournaments, I always look at it and go, you know, why isn't Adam Page in it? And why isn't Takeshita in it? And why isn't Orange Cassidy in it? And why isn't Brian Danielson in it? It's like you've got this tournament. I don't like. Wouldn't these guys? Because they don't want to beat people is the answer. I mean, we had the next but match, that, but it makes the tournament. It makes the tournament look so. It's it's like you look at this tournament. These are the eight top contenders. When almost all of the top people um, are not in this tournament. I mean, there's no. I mean, Joe who is Ring of Honor TV champion, just got beat by Punk on a pay-per-view, and he's the biggest star in this tournament, and he's probably winning it. And you got freaking Nick Wayne, who never wins or rarely wins, never has beaten anybody important, and he's in the tournament. He's main eventing the show tonight. Um, it's just, you know, it's just like, I I don't get how you do, you know, you do this. Um, I mean, Takeshi has just beaten Kenny Omega, you know, um, Orange is just coming off of a great championship run with the other title, and he's over. Um, you know, it's just, oh man, I it it's like it's like the the world title should be something that everybody wants. That's the whole key of making the title mean something. And then you're in there with this tournament. You know, I mean, and you know, I don't say nobody good is in it, but but of the top guys. Uh, of your really tippy top guys, I mean Darby. I guess you could argue, Joe. You know, I mean, you know, to an extent, Joe did a great job tonight. But, but still, it's just like, man, this tournament makes. I just looked at this tournament, and it's like, Adam Page just won the Battle Royal. Takeshi just beat Kenny Omega. You know, Orange Cassidy just had this great run. None of them ran it. Well, next we had an open challenge. John Moxley faces Ar Fox. Who also never wins. Who has had 13 matches. He's won exactly one. He's had 12 losses. And he's had eight championship matches. Yes. So he faces... That, 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 said, that said they had a really good match. Well, they had a very good match, but I mean... Yeah. No, nobody I else was there to accept an open challenge. The guy who's I, lost eight championship matches and 11 I, out of 12 total matches... Man, I know. Moxley I know. beat the hell out of this guy. Death Rider pinned him. It was a glorified squash match. They gave A.R. Fox some stuff, but Moxley pretty much beat the hell out of him for most of the match. He got a lot of stuff in. He got, you know, he got near falls. He got dives. Um, several dives. He got a couple dives. Um, but but it was a good match, you know. Um, but, yeah, it's like, no. I mean, obviously nobody expected A.R. Fox to win. I mean, that's the thing. It's like they'll... Well, when when you don't have the um, you know the the streaming shows anymore, you can't build up wins for these guys because they don't they're not going to have AR Fox beat anybody on you know Rampage or on Collision. So it's just kind of like these guys like you know AR Fox and Commander who you know these guys that are good and 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 you know and all that they're really just enhancement guys because all they do is lose. So then uh, Darby's shaking his hand, and on the big screen, Nick's backstage, and Christian and Luchasaurus show up, and Christian says, you know, I watched some of that Buddy Wayne footage. I owe you an apology. He was even worse than I thought. And he says, if you want a true mentor, maybe you should be looking at a champion, not this Darby Allen. And say hi to your mom for me, he adds. We had Chris Stadlander, Emmy Sakura. And uh, this actually aired at 20 minutes. It was in the second quarter of the show. I cannot remember the last time they put a women's match in the second quarter of Dynamite. And it was a good match. Uh, Emmy avoided the uh, her finish, went for the double underhook backbreaker, kick out there. Statlander dumped her, hit a lariat, Wednesday night fever tombstone pinned her. 
and uh, retained the TBS title, also an open challenge. Okay, so that's the best? Well, that's what they had here. I mean, it's an like open challenge all... in AEW means any rando can accept because nobody else apparently wants to accept. Or they don't run fast enough to the uh, sign-up page. I guess. I mean, you know, this match was fine. I mean, the one thing tonight, I mean, I guess one thing about the show tonight, and this is like typical AEW, they had a really small crowd in Indianapolis tonight. I mean, but man, what a great crowd. It's like every match they were into, big. You know, I mean, like it was loud. Um, it's like you watch it and you think that like, man, it's like there's, there's like 6,000 people here, but there's maybe half of that. And whenever it's it's weird, I mean, there there are exceptions, but most of the time when AEW has a small crowd, they're great. And sometimes when they have a big crowd, they're not. It's just really weird. Um, but yeah, the um, like like in all of these matches that that easily, you know, could have had no heat just because of the idea of it was predictable who was going to win. The star power of the loser is not particularly high. Um, the crowd was into him you know and and you know and the wrestling is good but you know there's plenty of matches where the wrestling's good work modern crowds aren't into it so it's a good crowd good crowd of who was there Roderick strong did a promo talking about his rough upbringing and said i grew up alone i'm gonna win this grand slam tournament alone and it starts tonight we had Aussie Open versus Jericho and Sammy. Don Callis on commentary. This was a really good match. This was a great match. Very no. fast pace. They worked their ass off. I mean, they were going in a hard clip. And uh, this well, is Aussie, awesome uh, chance. Uh, Aussie, Open, Aussie Open is a great team. And, you know, Sammy's really good. He's, Everybody was great in this He's match. really good. Every, I know everyone in the match was good. But, I mean, it's just... Um, yeah, it told a little bit of a story. You know, they had uh, Jericho and Sammy... Had their problems, you know, in the match, you know, where the miscues and everything. But well, man, Jericho accidentally hit him there near the finish, and then he hits the Judas effect, and he wins. Yeah. But then he goes to hold up Sammy's hand, and Sammy yanks the arm away. And the, the fans, of course, these fans nowadays, we talked about this, they love hugging. And they chant hug it out, get, but instead... They didn't get the hug. They got a big shoving match, and then Sammy storms out and left through the crowd. We'll talk yeah. more about that later in the show. We had a post-match promo from Ricky Starks. It was a great promo. And let me tell you something. This was a total 150% babyface promo. I mean, he's talking about when's it time for someone like me who does what he says he's going to do. Don't give me a piece of bread. I want a full-course meal. I've done everything I said I was going to do. I'm absolute Ricky Starks. It's like the people love this guy. Remember when he turned heel and it was like weeks they were just cheering him on every show. They hadn't figured out he was a heel. Yeah, but I he think also the right against, call is he, that he all, needs to be a baby face. Yeah, but he was also going against Punk. You know, that, that was part of it too. And people didn't want, you know, a lot of people wanted to boo Punk and, and he was the opponent. Um, but yeah, I mean, he whipped Ricky Steamboat. You know, he, it's pretty heelish. You know, 70-year-old guy. But yeah, he I mean, did. People, but I mean, it's to me, the, he was the, much the people, more successful as a baby face. They want him to be a baby face. Well, I, I, and I, I, uh, you could use some baby faces. Yeah, it could go either way. I mean, he, he was he proved to be effective as a heel. So um, just I just think, you know, with so many of the guys here, really, you know, it's like with Danielson and everything like that. And, you, you know, and even Moxley kind of talked about it. it's like, you know, we're. We can be babyface. We can be heel. It all depends on we just we're the same person either way. You know, I I think in AEW one of the things, and I don't know if this is good or bad. You know, because a lot of people would say it's it's not good that you need clearly defined babyfaces and clearly defined heels. But today, you know, it's um, you know, it's so it's it's all situational. It really is. You know, it's like guy can be a babyface one week and heal the next week, and. Um, Again, I don't know if that's good, but um, that's just kind of how it is. Well, here's a problem with that theory. The absolute best business that we have seen over the course of the last year or so has been complete and total baby faces against complete and total heels. Sami Zayn and Roman Reigns, Roman Reigns and Cody. Yeah, but Roman Reigns. Okay, you're, you're I mean, right. there's no shades of gray in any of this. Yes, of course they cheer Roman, Roman. Reigns, they put Roman their Reigns, up. Ro Roman Reigns. He's was a heel. Roman Re Roman Reigns was a babyface for most of his heel run, 
Um, he did get booed against Sami Zayn and Cody Rhodes, but in most of his matches, and Jay he was and Jay Uso, Jay, yeah, but Jay's not super over babyface right but now. But not, but with, but with so many of the others, he was getting cheered. Yeah, before all of that, but in the last year, in 2023. He your, comes your out best every promos, time. Your, your best segments have been with the strong baby faces and strong heels. Except Roman Reigns was, the bloodline was cheered in almost all, every pro, promo. Yeah, but he's the heel in all of those top heels heel, that he has had a, this year. He's a, okay, he is, it, yeah, he, he's a working heel. He doesn't wrestle other, he does not wrestle other heels. True. But to the crowd, he's, he's a baby face most of the time. To the crowd, he's a superstar. Yeah. But he was not a babyface versus Sammy. He was not a babyface versus Cody. I just know he that when I was not a babyface against Jey Uso. He was a I heel know, against every single one of those all, people. All I know is that when I've gone to live shows with Roman Reigns, everybody cheers him. Well, everybody. sure, because Roman well, Reigns is coming out. Okay, so there He's you go. He's by far the biggest star they've got. Okay, there you go. Hey, guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show. All of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.